Hi everybody, this is Dr. Ramey. Let's talk about how to determine the minimal inhibitory concentration or MIC. So in this problem, there's going to be a, um, a, a serial dilution that is done to set up this assay where in tube A there's 25 mg per mil of vancomycin. So this is concentration of vancomycin in tube A is 25 mg per mil. And then a serial dilution is made in tubes uh, B through F. So the concentration of vancomycin is going to go down in each of those tubes. Uh, then Staph aureus is inoculated in each tube. The tubes are incubated for 24 hours and growth is observed in only tubes E and F. So we have growth only in these two tubes here after inoculation and incubation. So identify which tube contains the MIC and calculate the MIC of vancomycin for Staph aureus. Well, since these, since tubes E and F both had growth, that means that tube D has the lowest concentration of vancomycin where there was no growth. So tube D is the MIC tube as a result. Now it's just a matter of determining what the concentration is in of vancomycin in tube D. And in order to calculate that, we need to determine what the total dilution factor is uh, from tube A to tube D. So for that, we use the formula, the dilution factor is equivalent to the volume transferred over the total volume. So for tube A, for example, from tube A to tube B, the volume transferred is 1 mil, so that would be 1.0 over and uh, uh, one mil is added to nine mils so that gives a total volume of 10 mils so 10.0 so that is uh, a 1 over 10 or a 1 to 10 or a 10 to the minus 1 dilution so when performing serial dilutions it's recommended that you write your dilution factors as a an exponent in this fashion uh, so um, one way to calculate that or to look at that is that when you have a 1 to 10 dilution or a 1 over 10 dilution, however many zeros you have here in the denominator is equivalent to the negative exponent here. So 1 0 equals 10 to the minus 1 here. So this dilution factor here is 10 to the minus 1. <clears throat> The dilution factor from tube B to tube C is the same. It's 1 into 10. <clears throat> so that would also be a 10 to the minus 1. And from tube C to tube D, it's 0.1 into 9.9. .9. So in that case, the dilution factor would be uh, 0 0.1 over 9.9, .9, which is uh, equivalent to 1 over hundred I'm sorry it wouldn't be 9.9 .9, it would be a point one over 10 so let me let me just erase that because it's the total volume right in the uh, um, it's the volume transferred over the total volume so the total volume uh, when you add point one into tube D is 10 mils so point one over 10 is equivalent to 1 over a hundred got two zeros here so that's equivalent to 10 to the minus 2 so this dilution factor here would be 10 to the minus 2 but we need to determine the uh, total dilution factor from tube A all the way to tube D so from here to here 
because remember D is our MIC tube. So we just uh, the easiest way to do this uh, is to just add up those exponents, and this is why it's recommended to always put your dilution factor. Uh, write it as uh, we've done here with uh, uh, these negative exponents. So we add these up. Minus 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 gives us a total dilution factor of 10 to the minus 4, right? So minus 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 is minus 4. So the total dilution factor is minus 4. And now to determine the MIC, uh, the co MIC concentration, so the concentration of vancomycin in tube D, we need to uh, multiply our original concentration, which is given to us, 25 mg per mil, times the dilution factor of 10 to the minus 4. Okay, so we just multiply those. So this would be uh, 25, and this is mg per mil, times 10 to the minus 4 so this number so the total dilution factor is 10 to the minus 4 and that is equivalent to so this is 25 times 10 to the minus 4 mg per mil but that's not in proper scientific notation we really need the decimal to be right there to the right of the first whole number so we would want to write this as 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 mg per mil. Right, so we're moving the decimal to the left one place. So we need to add a plus 1 to our exponent. So minus 4 plus 1 is equivalent to minus 3. So uh, one potential final answer is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 mg per mil. And if that's an answer choice, if it's a multiple choice question, then that would be your selection. However, let's say that that is not the an one of the answer choices if this is a multiple choice question. So how can we convert this to micrograms per mil? Well, um, so you see the answer here is 2.5 micrograms per mil. So we've got 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 migs per mil. So let me just come here and say this is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And this is migs. I'm just going to put that over mil. And you need to know that 1 milligram is equivalent to 1,000 micrograms. And then you can do the conversion here where you put um, uh, 1,000 micrograms over one milligram. Uh, the milligrams are going to cancel and when you multiply 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 times 1,000 you simply get 2.5 micrograms per mil, right? Because the mil is still, still here. So 2.5 micrograms per mil. So these two answers are in fact the same, right? 2.5 mg per mil times 10 to the, uh, I'm sorry, 2.5 mg per mil times 10 to the minus 3 is equivalent to uh, 2.5 micrograms per mil. So the same answer, 2.5.